Hey, what's going on, Flash Mob? One of the most intimidating things to learn for content creators is how to edit. They don't know where to start, the programs are expensive, or everything just seems like a whole new world. In this video, we're gonna run through a complete beginner's guide showing you everything you need to know to get started, some key features, and techniques to help you start cutting videos fast like a pro. If it's your first time here, welcome. My channel is all about helping you turn your passion into a paycheck whilst taking you along my filmmaking journey. If that's the kind of thing that you're into, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Everything we're gonna talk about in this video will be available in the free version. So let's jump right into it. first open DaVinci Resolve, there's a lot of things going on, but it's not as complicated as you might think. The media page is a simple way to locate and import your media that you want to use in your project. It shows you only what you need to see and makes it easy to organize it. This page is pretty simple. All we really have is our folders and our drives for our computer over here. We have a previewer over here. And we have our media pool where we would put all of our clips once we import them into the project. And if you need to, you'll see your metadata over here as well. So let's import some media and see how this works. So these are some BTS from a shoot we did not too long ago that I want to make a little video from. All right, so this is all the footage. What I like to do right away is create a new bin. And I will name this a... Let's actually name it the exact same thing. The EMG BTS. I'm going to take all those files that's from that folder and we're going to throw it into that one. And then I also have some footage from Sean Diamond. So let's add that in. And same deal, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to take all of this footage and put it in there. Now, the reason that we want to put all of this footage into a folder like this is so that we can keep everything organized. As we go through the footage, if we go through everything, we want to know where everything is and how to do what we got to do with it. And then I'll just show you guys a couple of things here with the, uh, with the previewer. So if we click on any clip and we want to look at it the preview will show us what, what we're looking at these are where all the clips are here's where our metadata is letting us know everything we need to know about that clip and these are just the audio waveforms here so great now that we have all of our media imported we can move over to the cut page the cut page is all about speed DaVinci decided to give us a cut page where you have the ability to quickly preview the content you load into the project and add it to your timeline. I personally don't use this page as much, but let's look at what we can do with it. So our cut page is very similar to our media page where you basically get to see all of the footage that you're going to be able to play around with in each folder. And if you click here, it'll show you all the different folders that you made. So really straightforward, really simple. And then this is a preview page as well. So if we click through it, you can easily have a quick look at the whole entire clip nice and easily. And down here's your timeline. So your timeline essentially is where you put all the clips that you want to use in your project. So for example, if I see a couple of things that I like here, let's see, you got a behind the scenes shot right here. Cool, cool, cool. You got a nice quick behind the scenes here. So I'm going to hit my in point, hit my, let's go about here. So let's go to the in point and our out point here. And then I can just simply drag this down into our timeline. And if we hit the space bar, we can just play it back and see exactly what we're looking at here. And what DaVinci automatically does is create a quick little timeline for us here. A couple other things I wanna show you really quickly on the cut page is this section right over here. So we can change the aspect ratio depending on how we're gonna be delivering this video right through here. So if it's gonna be in 4K, cool. 1080, there. If you wanna do a portrait thing here, 
we could switch it and now we have a portrait view. If we go back here, cool. Now, if you wanna make this a little bit bigger, we could just open our inspector, take the zoom controls, make it a little bit bigger, and then we can position it any which way that we want. Maybe you wanna see me and Quran. Maybe you wanna see Dwayne. Or maybe you'd like to see OT. Whatever you wanna see, you could just position it that way. What's really cool is that, like I said, this is a really quick way to pull all the clips that you wanna pull in together. So let's say, for example, I see something here that I really like. So let's hit our I and O for in and out points again. And then we just drag it in. And what the cut page likes to do is when you drag the clips down, it doesn't leave any spaces, it doesn't leave anything else in there. It just puts everything together nice and quick and easy. One last thing that I'll show you here on the cut page is right here you'll see your full timeline. So if we go to the beginning and we hit play, this is just basically showing you everything that we currently have on our timeline and the way that it's set up right now. And then let's say for example, uh, we wanna add a clip over top of this because this, this clip is kind of long, right? So pretty long clip. Let's say right here we wanna stop it. We wanna add a new clip of this. Let's. Let's get our behind the scenes shot of Kofi doing his thing, modeling. Boom, so let's say we now wanna take this section and we wanna put it over top here where this playhead is. What we'll do is we'll just hit one of these quick um, selection options and we'll just pick this one because this is placed on top and boom, it'll place the clip on top where we had the playhead and then we go from there. And let's say we wanna move this over a little bit. We just take it, drag it over and now we don't have that clip that's just hanging off the end. Cool. So basically that's just to show you how it works. Obviously we're not really creating anything because we're just using random clips. It's just basically to show you how it works. I will do a full breakdown video of the cut page and how you use it in our Filmmaker Pro course. If the cut page was made for speed, the edit page is made for finesse. The way DaVinci intended for us to use the program is to create our rough draft in a cut page and then add all the other elements in the edit page. So as you can see here, the edit page is an exact duplicate of what we did with the cut page. So the three clips, the way that we had it lined up, all of our audio, it's all exactly the same. To the left hand side here is our media bin again where we see all of the media that we were using in the project. What I like to also do is see my effects down here. So if you just click on these little tabs up here, it'll, it'll pull up different information, whatever you wanna look at. The way that I like to have it set up is to have the media pool and my effects showing. So let's turn that one off, turn back that one. And now we can see all the clips as well from here. One other thing that I wanna show you guys really quickly is that you can actually change the way that these clips are viewed. So right now we're seeing everything in a little tiny squares or whatever. We can actually increase the size of those by dragging this slider. You can make them as big as that or as small as that, whatever you really like. Or we can change it to something like this where it's a clip on a line with a little bit of the metadata information. Or we can have it just listed like this where you get a lot more of the metadata information but you don't get a, really, you don't get a preview. I generally like to look at mine like this. And that's a little too big for me. I like to see three at a time, so great. Now I have an idea of what's happening in the clip and then I could just slide my mouse across and have a look and see exactly what's going on in that clip if I want to use it or not. These are where our folders are so we can look at all the different folders where we put the footage that we had from the uh, first media pool page. So over here we get a previewer for the clips that's in the media pool. If you double click here, this will show you all the preview clips here. And then if we do our in and out again, so I and O, and we could just drag this into the timeline. When we play here on the timeline, that's what shows up on this viewer. So let's take a look real quick. Cool. Now I always like to have my inspector showing. So right now it's not showing. I like to throw that on just so I can see what's going on. Oops, I meant to hit inspector. So again, I have my inspector over here with all my controls right there. And I also like to see my mixer. So you hit that, it brings up your little audio mixer thing, just so you can see the levels and make sure that, you know, everything that you have going on down here is actually making sense. 
So in this case, uh, I actually don't want any of her audio playing. So if I hold the option key here and click and drag, I can select only the audio and then I can delete it. Cool. This is where your um, effects are. Like I said before, you got your video transitions, audio transitions, titles, whatever else you really want over here. One other thing that I'm going to show you on the edit page is your uh, timeline previewer. So if you click on this thing, you can make your video track a little bit bigger so that you can see the clips a little more. And same thing with the audio track. So we don't actually have any audio in there. I guess we could just take a clip and just add some audio in. So we'll take this, drag it in. So here's our little audio previewer. If we click on this again, we can make those audio previewers a little bit bigger. I like to kind of keep them both around the same size. So I'll go about here. And then I just like to see just a little bit of the video. So I'll go about there for that. So the other thing I want to show you guys really quickly is this little toolbar here. So these are your quick select options. So this is your uh, selection mode. So you hit A to get to that really quickly. And all that really does is help you move the clips around wherever you want to move it. Uh, your blade tool, you'll use it to cut your footage. So if I want to make a cut anywhere in the footage, I can just use the blade tool. And the quick key for that is B. And uh, this is your uh, snapping tool. So I'll show you guys how that works really quickly. So when it's off, and let's say I have my uh, selection tool selected, it won't like magnet, like, it's like a magnet almost that kind of connects the two, the two uh, clips together. When it's not on, it won't do that. When it is on, you hit N to turn that on. You'll see those little things and it kind of like, it just attaches it to the end of wherever the last clip is. And this is the link key. So right now, if we take a look at this clip, right now the, the video portion of it is selected as well as all the audio options is selected. If we highlight that clip and we hit the link key, it separates them. So now everything is its own clip. If we wanted to relink them, just go back to the top here, hit that and now they're all linked again. Everything below the playhead will be linked together again. And finally, these are your uh, quick guides to look at your timeline. So if you hit this, this will show you the entire timeline in the viewer down here. You can zoom into your playhead with this one, or you can zoom on and see everything here. And then of course you can increase or decrease the size using this slider. But I like to use these when I want to quickly look at everything on a timeline or just see everything at the same time. I'll use these. The Fusion page is where you go to create all your special effects. If you're familiar with editing programs, this is similar to like After Effects. DaVinci decided to use a node-based way of creating effects opposed to a layer-based way. There is certainly a learning curve, but once you understand it, you realize it's so much better. So because this page can get pretty complicated, I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'm just going to show some of the basic stuff about the Fusion page. So this is Previewer 1 and Previewer 2. So if you hit 1 and 2 on these previewers, it'll show you what's happening on that uh, previewer. The next thing that we'll look at really quickly is that you can again have your inspector on this side. You can pull up your metadata, your keyframes, uh, and then your splines, which again, a lot of information happening on this page. We're not going to get into everything. We're just going to look at an overview real quick. Over here is where you'll see all of your uh, keyframes or your frames within uh, the clip that you're looking at. So this one goes from zero to about 760 frames and basically as you scrub through it here, you just go through the clips. Point blank period, very simple. Over here is where you'll see some of your frequently used tools. So some of the more popular ones is like a background. If you want to add some text, if you want to paint on here, uh, any color correction occurs that you want to have happen. And uh, these are some of your important um, like transform and merge tools. Again, this is something we'll talk about a little bit more when we get into the specifics of this page in another video. Over here, you can create some shapes. Um, then you get into like 3D stuff and yeah, it's, it's a lot. If you look down here, this is where we talk about our nodes. So remember how we said that DaVinci uses nodes and After Effects uses layers? Well, this is how it looks. 
And I remember hearing online one time that the easiest way to kind of understand how nodes works is to think of this as like a train starting here and this is where its final destination is. So this line here is the is the route that the train is taking. So whatever you start with here, if you add anything along the route, it'll be there at the end of the destination as well. So for example, let's use some text to kind of illustrate this. So add a text node and we'll just say uh, test information. So great. Now right now you can't see anything because it's not connected to the route at all. It didn't get on the train basically. And if we hit number two on here, we'll see the, the test information is written here, but you can't see anything because like I said, it's not on the route yet. The way for us to get this train on the route is by adding a merge layer. So the way that you do that, if you go up here, you'll see, where is it here? This one, I think. Yeah, let's click over here. And then now we have a merge layer here, which is cool. What we got to do now is to connect this text layer to our merge layer. So we just grab the little end and we just put it on there. If you can see that, just grab an end and you just drag it over here. And now the merge layer is connected to the text layer. And now we got to put that text layer on the route with the train. So the way to do that is to just highlight both of these here. And if you hold shift and drag it down over here, this is going to essentially get the text layer on the train on its way to the final destination. So once we do that, I don't know why it disconnected, but let's just reconnect those. So now you'll see the test information text is now on the route before the train reaches the final destination. So yeah, that's really as basic as it gets for the Fusion page. Uh, like I said, you can do so much in here. If you actually hit the shift and space bar, you can see some of the additional tools that you can use uh, on the node, uh, on the Fusion page, and you can pretty much do anything you want here. This is something that I'm learning more and more every day. So as I learn more and I can teach it to you guys, I'm going to be making videos specific to the Fusion page in the future. So you guys stay tuned for that. So this section right here is the reason why I decided to try DaVinci in the first place. I want to start coloring my videos in a more professional way and use the same tools industry leaders were using. There is no other video editing program currently available that gives you this much control over coloring your videos. So this is the color page. Now a lot goes down on this page, but we're going to go through it slowly so that you guys can understand what type of power we're working with here. So the first thing over here is your gallery. And if you create a look, you can actually just create a what they call a still. And that essentially just takes all the information that you use to color that clip and puts it over here to refer to later. This is where you can find all of your LUTs. And then again, if you want to look at your media pool, you can go back over here. But I like to usually either have my uh, LUTs or gallery open over here. This is your previewer. And essentially this is where anything that you do with all of your nodes that's located over here, this is where you're going to see what you're actually doing. And uh, what I like to also do over here is show my effects. Let's make this a little bit smaller so we can get our nodes up. And these are all the effects that you can add to uh, whatever you're doing in your color page over here. Uh, these are all of your clips that's currently on your timeline. So you can preview that. You could turn it off and on by just clicking on this one here. If you'd also like to see your timeline, you can just click here and that'll give you a quick little preview of your timeline down here. And this is where all the magic happens. So this is your, your color wheels. You have some curves over here. You can either have your scopes or something like, uh, I don't know, your keyframes, whatever. This is where all the magic happens down here. So I'll quickly show you how I would color grade this one. So right now we have this looks like the Sony camera. So what I like to do first is just add a color space transform to my first node and the color space input that we used would have been the Sony S Gamma 3 and this was also used with the S Log 3 
and we're going to be outputting to rec 709 great so right away you can see looks pretty good right i would say so what you could do is uh, add nodes and the way to do that is to hit the option s key that i add a new node what i like to do is hit the tab button and then i'll just say what i want to call this so we'll call this exposure then you could play around with these sliders this is your lift this controls your dark points this is your gamma this hits your midpoints and then this is your gain this controls your highlights so let's pull this down a little bit so that we're in the value recommendations and that looks pretty good maybe i'll add another one and let's call this uh, saturation and then what I can do here specifically is either do like a global slider to bring up the saturation on everything. Or I can go into my curves here. And this is my hue versus saturation that you can see right here. And I'm going to just look at the skin tones here. Let's actually switch this over to our vector scope. So let's look at our skin tones. So we can see, and let's actually also turn on our skin tone indicators right here. Cool. So that line just shows us where our skin tone should be. And if we move our mouse around it here, we can actually see that our skin tones are pretty much dead on. They look really good. You can see it here, and on our vector scope, it's showing us that it's right on the line, which is awesome. But let's just say we want to increase the saturation on our skin. Let's just hit the reds. That's usually where our skin tones fall. If we pull it down, you can see this is just hitting our skin tones. All right, so let's add a little more saturation to the skin. Then I have some, uh, we both had some chains on here. So if we could pull that down or bring it up to make it a little bit more yellow, let's bring that up. If you want to move up the red on his shirt as well, so you see that uh, design on his shirt, we can bring up the saturation like that, or we can bring it down like that. I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit because it's a little too dominant in the shot. Cool. And then let's just say, for example, if the skin tones were off, we'll come back here. So we have it perfect right now. Let's keep an eye on our uh, vector scope here. If we start messing with this, you can see that skin tone starts falling off that line and going like kind of weird. And it's reflected in our skin tones, right? So if you want to get that back on the line, right about there looks perfect. And then what we can do is just take that color grade that we actually did there and copy it over to the other clips that we might want to work on as well. So let's hit this one. And then what I can do is right click on this. So I'll select the clip that I want to bring the grade over to. Then I'll right click on the grade on the clip that I want to select the grade from and I'll hit apply grade. And that'll bring the same exact information from this clip over to this one. Now we can see in this one that it is definitely a lot more exposed than the other one. So what we can do is go back over to our exposure uh, node and we can start messing with our lift gamma and gain again. And I'll also just go back over to our regular uh, curves here. And I'm also gonna make a little bit of an S curve here as well. So let's bring those darks down. Let's go back over to our parade. So you can see here we have a little bit more space that we could play around with the darks here. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that for a second. And it looks like our highlights are completely clipped. So what we can do is just bring that down a bit right there. And then again, we'll start messing with our, with our uh, lift, gamma, and gain. So we'll bring that down a bit. We'll also bring down our midtones. Get that a little bit more under control. And then we'll mess with our gain just a little bit. Right about there seems okay. Let's go back up here and just see what happens. Yep, yep. 
we just have our highlights there. Now there are gonna be some parts of this that are blown out. So you can see on the wall here, the window, uh, there's just no information left just because that's how we filmed it and it's too bright. So all of these things that you can see on the vector, on the parade here, you can see that it's all completely blown out. If we go over to our waveform, again, we can see all the blown out areas are gonna be these areas here. Okay, so let's say we have this all colored and we have it a way that we want to look. And let's just say we want to add a, add a LUT. We can just add a new node. We'll name that LUT. And then we can go over here. I'm going to look at some of my film looks here. And really you could just, you know, swipe across and get a quick preview and just see what looks like what. Now all of these look And then if you and then if you want to drag something on, if you want to actually use one of these LUTs, you can just select it and drag it on over the node that you want to work with. And it's that easy. This is a section that we're going to spend a lot more time in in Filmmaker Pro. A really quick way to make your work stand out is by color grading it and creating your own look and feel. This section is so powerful that I recommend taking the time to understand it and how to use it. I'll leave a link in the description where you can sign up for the early bird mailing list and be the first to know when the course is available and take advantage of all of the early bird benefits. This is probably the area where I need to learn the most. I just try to record my audio as clean as possible and add it to my videos. If you want to tweak it more, this is where it's done. So let's quickly look at the audio page. So on this page, you can just see that what they do is they break it down and you can see a couple of the clips and then the green is where you can actually see your audio. Let's just move that over a bit. And this is where you get to see all of your audio information here. And I'm not too skilled in this page, but you can do quite a few things. You can, you know, work with the, see the levels over here at the top and the channels that correspond to it. You can also see it down at the bottom. You still get a quick preview window over here. Uh, you can add your effects, open up your effects over here. Again, you can, you know, choose to see uh, the meters or not if you don't want to. And then all of your quick tools are here to play, stop, and go back. And then again, here are a couple of other different uh, quick tools that you can use right here. And over here to the right, you can actually also change the levels of the audio on the corresponding tracks that they're on. So this is channel one, two, three, and four. And we have one, two, three, and four. If I want to make this a little bit louder on both three and four, I could do that. And if we play it back, you hear that. And let's say if we want to make it a little bit lower because it was kind of loud, let's play it back. Same thing. And let's just say we want to add on an effect to any one of our audio channels. We can just click any of these effects over here click it and drag it onto the channel that we actually want to work with. And then a little preview viewer will show up and you can make whatever changes you want over here as well. And finally, when you're all done, this is where you come to export your content. DaVinci makes it extremely straightforward to export your content pretty much anywhere you want to with this built-in presets and the ability to create your own. Another nice option is being able to upload your exports directly to somewhere like Frame.io or YouTube. When it comes to time, it's great to be able to skip the upload step to another platform and have it all done in one step. And this is our export page. Uh, I love this page because it really simplifies the whole thing for you. Again, you get a preview here. You get your timeline over here. You get to see all your clips that you are using here. And then this is your presets so you can create your own presets or you can use what DaVinci already has in the top bar over here and then of course you just name your file pick a location you pick whatever type of uh, export settings you actually want to work with and what I really love is that if you actually want to upload directly to YouTube you can you know click this bring this drop down up click that put in the title description everything that you want here even if you want it to be private public or unlisted and then you hit the upload uh, or add to render queue. And this is where it shows you where all of the projects that you have to render will show up right here. And then when you're ready to render, you hit render all, and then this will start exporting for you. But other than that, super straightforward. If this video gets enough views or I get questions directly in the comments, I'll create an entire YouTube series of how to use DaVinci Resolve. 
If not, you'll just get the full breakdown, including my own personal workflow in Filmmaker Pro. The link will be in the description. One other thing I'd like to mention is our 10K subscriber giveaway. If at the time of viewing this video, I don't have over 10,000 subs, you can enter. We'll be giving away the Amaran 100DS to one lucky supporter. You just have to do four simple things to enter. First thing, subscribe to this channel. Next, you wanna sign up for the Filmmaker Pro Early Bird mailing list. Then you wanna follow me on Instagram, find our giveaway posts and comment done. Once you've done that, you'll be entered into the giveaway. We don't get much engagement or love on the socials, which is fine because I want this giveaway to go to someone that really walks with us anyways. So if you love what we do, we wanna help get this light to you. Hope this helped and you learned something along the way. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Thanks for watching guys. Remember to look, learn, and share. Take it easy guys. Peace.